So far when discussing algebra on the SAT, I've treated it pretty traditionally, so very similar to how you might see it in your math classes in school. But as I said in earlier videos, the SAT is unlike most of what you're going to do in math class, and that's true of the algebra. So I'm just going to introduce here uh, how the SAT handles algebra, some examples of the ways they can throw a wrench in what you're used to. So the SAT knows that you're going to approach algebra problems like you were taught in high school, so sometimes as a result you're going to have to think outside of the box in order to solve them. Of course it's going to rely on certain skills, how to manipulate equations, but the answer won't be sometimes as straightforward as it is, say, in your math class. So let's look at a few examples. Note that really the SAT Math Tactics Algebra Series, I think, does a good job covering this in some depth. And those videos are actually available free, so go ahead and check those out to get a sample of what the Math Tactics videos look like overall. Let's go right into this one. So let's say I was given the following thing. So I get A plus B is 5, and I want to know what is 6A plus 6B. So if you look at this with the traditional eyes of you know someone who's used to doing algebra and math class in high school, you might think, well, I've got two equations, sort of, two unknowns. Maybe I can make a substitution, maybe I can stack an add, but you realize quickly you can't because you actually have three unknowns because you don't know what this adds up to. This isn't a number here. If this were, things might be a little bit easy, but we want to know what that number is. So if you try to do this with the traditional algebra methods, you're going to throw yourself off. When it turns out, you might see it already, and there's a much easier way to do it. It doesn't really rely on that at all, but does rely on you recognizing the relationships between these things. If a plus b equals 5, and I'm looking for 6a plus 6b, let me just go ahead and multiply both sides of this guy by 6. So notice what's weird is I'm not solving for a individually. I can't do that. I'm not solving for b individually. I can't do that. But I'm solving for them together. And that's one of the things you're going to see on SAT math problems uh, for algebra. They're going to ask you for weird things like x plus y, a squared plus b squared, really weird answers. And usually the trick is solve for them directly. So when I do that, well, I'm going to get 6a plus 6b equals 30. And there you go. Done. Right? And a lot of these questions are going to really go quickly. So the, tr the key is to see through them and figure out what's going on. So here's another example. 8a plus 2b equals 20. What is 4a plus b? Again, I can't solve for a or b individually. I can't do any substitutions, can't stack them, none of that stuff. But I can see that, well, wait a minute. Let me go ahead and divide this guy by 2. Let me divide that by 2 then. When I do that, I'm going to get 4a plus b on the left, and that's going to equal 10. And there we go. Done. All right, so we'll see a lot more examples of this in the SAT Math Tactics, but just be aware that the algebra will not be as straightforward as certainly I've laid it out here, and I've made no illusions that this is going to cover exactly how the SAT asks it. That's what the Math Tactics series is for. So go ahead and check that out. But let's actually look for one more kind of category of question, and it's solving for a variable in terms of another. You might actually do this in your math class, but still it bears repeating here. If 4x plus 2y equals z, what is x in terms of y and z? So the way to do this is to look at this breakdown. What is x? So we're looking for, when you see this, x equals. And when they say in terms of y and z, it just means we need to have y and z adding or subtracting or doing something in some way to represent x. So what we need to do is we take our original, which was 4x plus 2y equals z, and solve it for x. Right? We don't have numbers. we got some letters, but that's OK. We still use the same rules. So let's subtract 2y from both sides. I get 4x equals z minus 2y, divide both sides by 4. Now I've got my x equals, which is what I want, and then I'm left with z minus 2y all over 4, and that would be my answer. We're going to see in the Math Tactics series, plugging in might be a better way to do these kinds of problems. It depends on the problem, depends on what you're doing, but this is just the more algebraic way of doing it. So again, the best way to learn is to look at real practice problems, so be sure to check out SAT Math Tactics Algebra.